If God exists, then why is there so much suffering in this world? There is suffering in this world because we live in a fallen world. We live in a world where Satan is wreaking havoc, but we need to remind ourselves that our God is in control. When God had first created Adam and Eve, there was no suffering, there was peace. But it's the decisions that they decided to make that has caused all this suffering. But even in the midst of suffering, God has a greater purpose. What's God's greater purpose in the midst of suffering? Well, let me ask you this. We look in a situation like the coronavirus and we look at how we can't go out, we can't do anything, and we're angry at God, but we don't understand that the coronavirus has shown that the materialistic objects cannot help us. Sometimes we get so distracted in our nine to five lives or our schoolwork that we forget that the one person who has given us life, the one person who died on the cross for us, we don't even make time for them. We can ask ourselves, why has God allowed this to happen? Or we can ask ourselves, do we trust God's plan? And this reminds me of the story of Job in the Bible. And for those of you who don't know the story of Job in the Bible, Job was someone who had everything we could ever dream of. He had wealth, he had a wife, he had kids, he had everything. And Satan went to God and said, Job only worships you because he has everything. So God allows Satan to disrupt his family and to take away his wealth. And you want to know what the first thing Job did is? He didn't curse at God. When all this happened to him, he shaved his head off, took his robe off, and God is these and worship God. Where is our Job faith? We get in one accident, we get in one bill we can't pay, and all of a sudden we're asking, we're blaming God, why has he not provided? Why has he not come through? It may so be that that's the situation you're struggling. God has another door open already for you, but you have to trust his plan. And we ask him for a breakthrough, but how much do we truly trust him? The three men in the book of Daniel, they trusted God so much that they're willing to put their lives on the line. And for those of you who don't know the story, the three men were brought before a king and they were told to worship him. And they put their trust in God so much that they said that they weren't going to do it and that God was going to deliver them from it. And the king being so angry, he created orders for them to turn up the fiery furnace seven times and for the three men to be put into the fire. The king came back to see if the three men were dead. Not only did they see the three men standing, but they saw a fourth man in the fire. And that fourth man who was standing in the fire, you may be asking yourself, is the son of God. That same fourth man who was standing on the fire with those men is the same fourth man that's standing in the fire in your life. God allows suffering to happen sometimes because it strengthens our testimony. Because you have went through anxiety or depression or have struggled, you can go help someone who's writing that suicide note thinking of taking their life because they have no one that can relate to them. But you've been there so you can take how God impacted your life and you can impact their life through God. And then they can take how you impact their life and they can go impact the next person. God allows suffering because it brings us to a place of repentance. Think about a time in your life where you were at a low point, you were straight away from your relationship with God and it really brought you back to Him. It made you realize that you can't do it alone and that you need the person who wakes you up every day in your life to help you with the situation that you're in. Part of the suffering that goes on in this world is a result of sin. The same free will that Adam and Eve had in the garden is the same free will that causes the suffering that goes on in this world. And because we live in a fallen world, because we live in a world where there's so much sin, things are gonna happen. There's a devil who's wreaking havoc and causing all this destruction. But you need to understand that the same God who parted the Red Sea for Moses is the same God who can move the problems away in your life. You may not understand, but do we still trust him? Think about the suffering that you've been through and think about how it strengthened the person who you are today. And you may be asking yourself, well, what has God ever done for me? Well, God has given you the chance of eternal life. The same God who has allowed the suffering to happen is the same God who is gonna make it right one day. You may say to yourself, Andrew, I've been suffering for years, but I tell you today, there's healing through Jesus Christ. Today, your 10-year addiction, today your mental illness can be healed. You need to take that step of faith and ask God to deliver you, to trust that He, the same person who's given you life, 
is the same person who can deliver you from whatever situation that you're going through. The punishment for sin is separation from God and hellfire. But because of Jesus Christ, we don't have to go there. But you have to accept into your life. You have to repent of your sins. And you're asking how you can avoid hellfire? Well, if you pray this prayer with me, then you can start your journey on your relationship to Jesus. You can start making decisions that will impact your eternity. Not only are you forgiven for your sins, but you start on the path to eternal life. You turn away today from the life that you've been living, and you give your life to Jesus, and He will give you eternal life. Father God, I know that I'm a sinner. I know that the punishment for sin is death. But I know that you sent your son Jesus Christ on the cross to die for my sins, that whomsoever accept him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. So God, I pray today, Lord, that you will come into my life as my Lord and my Savior. I pray today, Lord, that you would forgive me for my sins. Jesus, today I repent, I realize that I'm a sinner, and I realize that you're the only thing that can give me eternal life. So today I accept you as my Lord and my Savior. Today, Jesus, I ask for supernatural healing. I ask Jesus for you to step into my home and to touch me and to heal me from whatever I'm dealing with. Today I declare that the chains are broken. Today I declare that the enemy has no power over me. Today I declare that I'm no more dead, that I'm alive in Jesus Christ. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. And if you truly prayed this prayer from the bottom of your heart, then Jesus has heard you, and Jesus is already working in your situation. For those who die in Jesus Christ, this is not the end. The same God who has allowed the suffering to take place is the same God who will provide a new heaven and a new earth. In Revelation 21, John says that I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth had passed away, and there was no longer any sea. There's a way out of this world. Please don't take it as a pleasure for your eternal soul. It's not worth it. And if you say, Andrew, I have no one else around me, but then I'm here for you. I'm going to put my number in the description box. And if you need prayer, if you need supernatural healing from God, if you need steps on your journey to Jesus, I'm there for you. Once again, guys, I love you guys from the bottom of my heart. Make sure to subscribe and leave a like and stay blessed.